Let's go ahead and do a slightly more complicated bearing. So this is what we had to do to get the flowers to work. Pretty much all the way to here. I'm just going to move those out of the way. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to make variants on the display color of the monster. And this will show you more about variants. Also how we can make our own Primvar displays. And I'll explain Primvars in a second. But you can see it from the PowerPoint in slide 20. So what I'm going to do is get the structure for the monster shape. So I'll just get my structure like that. And this gives us a whole bunch of information about the mesh. And what we care about is point count, point position, and I think that's about it on this one. We're going to use a compound that we've supplied with the video called polka dot. So the point count goes into here, the point position goes into here, and the mesh itself, let's set this up to be a little bit tidier, shall we? So we'll put a pass node in here just to pass that through and we'll plug that into the mesh geometry so this is now generating colors for this mesh and i can show you this by turning off the usd there we go putting down a terminal and just plugging the mesh into it so we're back in bifrost land so nothing will show up what i need to do is hide my usd and show my bifrost again so this is just the body of the monster. If I assign a diagnostic material, so give it some color, just to see if this polka dot compound is working. And there you go, there it is. You can see we've got dots all over our monster. So that's perfect. Delete that, go back out here, re-plug in the USD, and hide Bifrost again, and show USD proxy again, and we're back to where we so we've got this polka dot node. What I need to do is turn this into a display color. And up until now, the display color that you, that you get from USD by default is a single value. Let's find a display color here. So it's not, that's not it. This is the display color for the eyes. And this is just black. It's a single value. I can't plug an array of colors into there or anything like that. This, this becomes very important for game development stuff because as you're already aware, a game engine likes to have an RGBA value on the vertices. And that's what we're doing. We're changing the vertex colors now. So I'm going to define a new USD mesh because these are going to need to be variants. So we'll need to make the meshes. Now let's not get that wrong. I'm going to call this one polka dot. Just like the PowerPoint, right? And our mesh is going to be this guy. Well, yeah, it's, that's our mesh, but we can just use the pass node to keep things a bit tidier and keep things all together. So now I have an array of colors here. And if I was to go to attribute, create node USD display color, I can't plug that in. That's, that's not really going to work. So I'm going to need to define my own USD attribute. Define USD attribute. And this is what comes in with default. So the name is info ID. It's not a custom attribute. It's the type is token. The value is not enabled, no connections, all that kind of thing. So I'm going to show you how this works now. So this will allow us to define our own display color attribute. And the first thing we'll need to do is change it to display color like that. So that's the name of the attribute now. It's not custom, even though we're making it custom because display color is a USD attribute that already exists. We're not making a new attribute. The type is the type of data coming in. And what we want is a color three if array. So color three float array. And we want to make sure that enable value is on. So this means that the attribute compound here is expecting to get a value in the value node like this. You connect that the option for it goes away. And then the last thing we need to do is make sure it's a primvar because primvar stands for primitive variable, I believe. And that tells whatever is going to render this, like whether it's Arnold or Redshift or V-Ray or Unreal, it tells whatever it's going to render this, that this is a primitive variable and should be rendered. Okay. Right now it's set to constant. This is the interpolation. We can check the info node because we like the, the info node. It tells us things. 
Here's our primva. Declares the renderers that an attribute is associated with geometric, geometric primitives and can vary over the surface or volume. That's exactly what we want. This specifies how the attribute should be interpolated across the surface or volume. So what that means is that's a constant prim primva, that's a uniform primva, so that's just the same color for everything. That's a varying primva, so that means that there is an array coming in and it varies. This one is what the one we want, primva vertex, which means you're telling USD that there is a color value coming in for each vertex, which is precisely what we want. So let's change it to that. And then we plug that into our mesh prim as an attribute definition. So I'm going to, again, I'm going to kill that, kill that, and let's just plug this in just to have a look at it. And now you can see it's a little bit bright. Let me just try and very quickly adjust my gamma here. So we'll just take that down a bit. But you can see we've got our dotted pattern on our USD object. How do I know it's the USD object? Because Bifrost is hidden. So we'll just reset that to what it was and we have a polka dot. So we're going to be using this as variance on the mesh body. So I'm just going to plug everything back in real quick. That goes in there. And that one goes in there and we're pretty much back to where we are with our flower variance and things. That's just one variant we've made. So this is all of this together. Let's just tidy it up a little bit as one of our variants here. In this case, it's going to be a polka dot variant. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make a backdrop, call it polka dot. And then I can just take this guy and I can do all of this again from here. So I can just zoom out a little, grab those three, copy and paste. Now we don't want the polka dot anymore, we want a different one. And this is another one of the compounds I've supplied this week, which is the gradient. So let's have a look and see if that's there. And it is, and it's just a matter of replacing that and replacing this. And then this, this goes off into here. And we're going to need to change that name because it's very important that we change that name. Gradient. And again, let's quickly clean this up a bit. Grab these two, create a backdrop, call it gradient. Move that up a little bit, move everything up a bit. And we're just going to do this one last time, but this time we're going to use noise. There it is. And the noise wants the point count to go into the max iterations and the point position to go into the vertex positions like that. And then we just paste down, not that guy, just paste down those two. And this is going to become our noise variant. So plug that into value where it goes because we're adjusting the color and change the name to noise. Perfect, I suppose we'd better be, be Tidy, create a backdrop, call it noise. I, mean, I like to do that so that I can keep myself sane and see what I'm doing. But up here, I'm gonna define USD variant set again. So this is another variant set we're making. And we're gonna call this one color patterns, like that. And our selection, we can start with just noise, like so. And then we're gonna plug all of that into a new transform. Define USD prim as an X form, that's cool. We'll call this body. Now, if this, those of you might remember, we already have a mesh called body. We'll get into that. So what happens there is that this guy goes into the variant set definitions. This guy goes into the child. This is also a child, and this is also a child. So now all that we need to do is set our variant names and our, in here, our variant set name and our variant name. For the variant set name, I'm going to make a value node out of that. It just makes a string and I'm just going to plug that into each one. And 
and that goes into general variant selection variant set name and we do that for all three that way I know that my variant set name is the guaranteed to be the same across across the board and then this one what I'll just do is take that put that there same up here we're going to take gradient put that there and we're going to take noise and put that there so that's got our, our great our variants all set up and ready to go and we'll just add that to the stage again so we could use we'll use the same method we'll by daisy chaining and stage so we want that guy to go in there here's our primitive going in and you can see that it's overwritten what we had because it's all going into the body so we can set our parent path again here and once more it disappears up into the hierarchy you can see you have body has variants and flowers have variants and you can even should you want to you can break this connection now except you're going to lose your eyes sorry you could break this connection and so you've just got the eyes the flowers and the body we can check the, uh, let me just set my gamma down a little bit you can see this is a noisy pattern there. So I can go back here, go to my variant, color patterns, gradient. And there's a gradient. Variant sets, color patterns, polka dot. There's a polka dot. So now we've got two sets of variants, one on the body and one on the flowers. So moment of truth before I give you something to go away and do. What's this doing in Unreal? Does, does this variant information come across? So first things first, let's save it. Go in here, make sure that we are saving the file and I'm just going to be safe, break that connection, make it again. Let's just jump across to Unreal and literally let's just reload this guy. Okay, so it kind of looks like it's it's worked. The orange ones tend to be the ones with variants. Let's check the body. That's the noise pattern. That's our default. That's what we wanted. There's our polka dots and there's our gradient. So Variants don't have to be geometry. They can be an attribute like we've used, we've done here. We've made an attribute display color. You can set up a variant with pretty much most attributes in USD. And I can change the, I can grab the flower and I can change that to the tulip at the same time. Grab the body, change that back to noise. And you get, you get, you get to see what's happening there. And it's coming across. So, so something you could do for yourself if you wanted to would be add some geometry to this guy. Give him a hat, give him a set of glasses. Uh, hang some ribbons off his, off his smokestacks here or whatever it is you want to do. Set that as a variant and then you can just load the different variants inside of Unreal. Let me just quickly show you here. If I just make that smaller, make him smaller. So we've got some fairly big graphs here. So this one's not being used anymore. We can put him over there. But I can grab all of that, including that, and I can go me a backdrop make sure this backdrop has a color on it blue will be fine and we can grab that whole backdrop like so and just call this body color variance and this would be our this is the eyes of the monster and here are our flower variants so grab all of that backdrop there let's make that blue as well just to keep everything happy and we can call that lower mesh variants so you can use usd not just to bring in assets but you can bring variations of those assets as well and switch them inside of the engine now there is a way to get to the usd controls with blueprints i don't know what they are right now and this is not an unreal course this is a bifrost course as i kept saying so I'm going to move on to the next thing in USD now, which is instancing, which is another important thing to get into the engine.